Good morning, friends, and welcome back. I thought I would show you how to take one of these plain little wooden bird houses and turn it into this. And the links for all of these products will be on my website, including the papers, which are my own personal papers that I sell on a site called Zazzle. And just look below this video. You'll see the link to Zazzle as well as to my website. Now, before you get this started, you may want to determine whether you'd like to make this an outdoor birdhouse or an indoor decorative item. I am using this for both because I can leave this in my garage. We've got a little bit of an opening at the bottom of our garage and every winter birds go in there. They make nests anyway. And I found that out after I decoupaged this birdhouse a few years ago. I made a video out of it and I put this out in the garage not sure what to do with it. And sure enough, within a few weeks, look what happened on the inside. Some birds had stuffed the whole inside with a nest. And that winter we had a bunch of tiny little birdies flying around our garage learning how to fly safely away from the elements and they were protected and I feed these birds all the time so I think they're still around us. So I took this Martha Stewart multi-purpose paint, multi-surface paint I believe it's called. Now I made a mistake along the way. You'll notice that this birdhouse is perfectly intact and what I did was I followed the rules for the glass usage of this paint which is totally different from wood and I'll show you that as we go along. So I just took a roller and I went all around the surface using two different colors. I used this very light blush color pink and a little bit more intense of a pink color on the top and I'm still using the Martha Stewart multi-surface paint. And now here's where I got into trouble. I've used this paint on glass before because you can bake the paint onto the glass and it looks beautiful. So I followed the exact same instructions for wood and here's what happened. The temperature of the oven was far too hot to use on the wood. The glue came undone, the wood split in a couple of places, that's okay, I'm not too worried about that, but there's a mistake that I made for you. It also melted the paint for some reason. And the reason I put this in the oven is because you either can let it air dry for 21 days, which makes the paint permanent, or you can bake it. However, that is specific to glass, not wood. So this is okay to air dry anyway, it's just going out into the garage. It's not going to get rained on or snowed on eventually. And the most common question that I get on my videos is where do you get your papers? These papers are specifically my creation. So these are my watercolors from my flowers out in the yard. You can see there's roses, carnations, there's pink, there's white, there's a little baby's breath in there. And what I'm going to do is use napkin decoupage glue and I'm going to apply it on the birdhouse and apply my papers over top of it. So I'll decoupage my, and by the way, these are not rice papers, they're tissue paper. They're a little bit stronger than napkins and perfect when you're working on a surface. This is not necessarily a flat surface, it is a flat curved surface. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but you can see what I mean here. So I'm going to apply the decoupage glue. Now I'm going to apply my papers. And I'm going to put these in different areas. And another good thing about this, the tissue paper is a bit more firm. So once you apply the decoupage glue, then you decoupage your, surf your papers, you can add the decoupage glue right over top. So apply the decoupage glue, like here. Apply your tissue paper, like here. And then apply the decoupage glue right over the surface of that. Now once everything's dry, just take a brush and go back in with your decoupage glue and apply one more coat over the whole entire surface and let that dry. Just a couple of things I'd like to mention about Zazzle. This paper, th th my images, I made sure to do a tile image, which just means that there are several of the same image on one sheet. And this is a very large sheet. 
uh, I think it's about 15 inches long. In any case, this comes with a piece of cardboard, these papers, when they're shipped to you. By the way, if you pay $10 in the United States, a one-time fee of $10, you get free shipping for the whole year. So this piece of cardboard makes it a bit, actually a lot easier to cut these images out. You may want to use the whole image or you may want to cut them out like I'm doing here with the decoupage scissors. Zazzle does ship internationally. You can contact them by going through my link below this video and asking them what the shipping policies are to your country. And here's how I made the butterflies. I took these regular coffee filters. You can use the cone ones too that are flat, but I didn't have any on hand. So what I did was I took a few of these coffee filters. I cut off these edges here. Now I will be using the stamp that you see in back of my hand there, but I'm also going to show you how you can make these freehand in case you don't have a stamp. I will put the stamp on my website if I can find it. It's such a pretty stamp. It's got three different types of stamps on it too. All butterflies, but one's very lacy, one is kind of in the middle of the road, and the other one is just a plain butterfly. Now back to the filters, I went and got my roller brush and began to paint all of these. It, it works a lot easier if you paint from the center out. And I used the one color pink on one side and let it dry and then I flipped it over and did the other side in the darker color. And I just did this with about four or five filters. Now that the filters are dry, look at that sheen on this pearl pink paint that it's a Martha Stewart paint that just looks like silk it's beautiful and it's just a coffee filter is it just me I just think that's beautiful <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is take my stamp and I'm going to put a couple of these in at a time and here's how the butterflies look once I'm done with the punch and if you don't have the punch I have another idea you may have some other butterfly designs around the house. I have this hanging on the porch. This one's a little too large to work with. I also have a, see it won't fit on what I did here, but I also have screen magnets out there that are in butterflies pattern or shape. You can also probably, not probably, I'm sure you can find templates online for butterflies. And all you have to do is fold the paper in half and draw one half of the butterfly. So almost like you're making uh, snowflakes not nearly as complicated. Just fold the paper in half, place the butterfly down over it, and make sure you center it perfectly so that you have an even space. Now I'm not going to go into all of these lines here. I just want to make sure I have the basic outline. And I'm taking my small decoupage scissors and I'm going to cut this out. And again, you can do this with a template. If you have any butterfly patterns, you might have a pin, some jewelry, something that's just the right size. And go ahead and cut out your butterfly. And now I'm going to take a paper glaze product. And you might have one of these on hand, the uh, Aileen's paper glaze or these paper accents. And so that you know, I'm just about to apply this to the butterfly, but you will see down the center, I had put perfect pearls, which I should not have done first. If you want to use the perfect pearls, you have to wait until this step dries. And you want to apply your paper glaze over the butterfly, and this will give it a lot of stiffness and body. It will make it seem more permanent, and this works really well with the glitter that you're going to use over your butterfly. By the way, make sure you're working over a craft sheet or a non-stick surface. As usual, I applied too much. What I'm doing is moving this around a little bit. It will actually level out itself, but for the sake of brevity, and I'm trying to get this video done, <laughs> I am just moving this around a little bit, and it interfered with the pearls, which are not dry yet. So what I did was, while this was wet, I took my glitter, and I have been hoarding this glitter for about a year now. I can't find it anywhere else. It's my favorite glitter. I suspect that it's very, very fine pink, 
with some iridescent silverish larger chunks in there. I might have to try to make it myself. In any case, I sprinkled this all over my butterfly. And here are the smaller butterflies that I'm actually going to use on the project. You can see how they're a little tiny and hard to see. And when I tried to do a close up in the video, you could just see my hand and it's just a lot easier to show you on the larger butterfly. And then what I did was, these are the butterflies that you will see on top. And I took a plain butterfly and I glued the more decorative one over the top of it. And the reason for this was because I wanted them to stand out a little bit. There's so much pink on the project, which I love. It's a monochromatic project. But I did want to make sure that I had a little bit of depth to the surface here. And I simply used that same paper glaze as my glue. So I just applied the butterfly, lined it up in the center there, pressed it together, and I put these aside to dry. I also added a bead of the E6000 glue right around the opening here, and I put some gems around there. By the way, this birdhouse is all completely dry now. And once I was done adding the gems all around the outside there, I took these pop dots and I cut them in much smaller, into much, probably quarter sizes there. And I put them in different places. Just, I only wanted three on here, so I put three of these down. And on top of it, I placed my butterflies. And now I went back in with the perfect pearls and I just wanted that bottom piece of the butterfly to stand out a little bit. So I just outlined that bottom wing with the perfect pearl just so it would stand out a tiny bit more. And here is how our completed birdhouse looks. I'm so sorry that the wood split there, but I didn't have another birdhouse on hand that I could use to show you. And if you do want to use this outside, I would suggest you omit the butterflies. But the Martha Stewart paint, if you let it cure for 28 days, it can withstand the rain, the snow, the sunlight. You're okay outside. The paint is on the sheer side. You may want to actually use a base coat of gesso or chalk paint underneath, which could be white or a very light pink and then applied the paint over to that. You can see that there's a still a little bit of a wood grain coming through, which I'm okay with, but uh, I think I personally next time I would base coat it first and then apply the Martha paint over top of it. Don't put it in the oven. <laughs> that was my mistake that I made for you so that you don't have to go through that. And uh, thank you so much for your lovely comments, my friends. I will see you guys next week with another video. Don't forget to subscribe. That means everything. Please go through my website for all of your Amazon needs. It's a huge help to me and allows me to keep making videos. Link is just below here. Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you like and follow my page, you'll be notified every week on Facebook when I put a new video out. Oh, I forgot to film this too. I painted the rope up above here the same using the same Martha paint I then added some adhesive and poured glitter all over it so that it matches the rest of our birdhouse and I hope you guys are enjoying your summer I will see you guys next week with another video thanks again my friends bye bye